Hi, I'm Glenn, City Bound and Fishing Field Team, COAF Field Team on YouTube. And this round, we're talking about our trip to Texoma, Lake Texoma. We're going to ride across the border over the dam to the other side to Burns Run East. It's a state park, Corps of Engineer run, where we learned about it through, well, looking on YouTube, found out from Ray Ray Fishing. He's got some really good up-to-date videos of some fishing up at the Texoma area, Denison Dam, as well as some areas up in the Sherman area, which is some good fishing if you just keep abreast as to what is out there. So we learned from this last video that he posted, I believe about a couple of weeks ago, or if not four weeks ago, it looked like there was some striped bass to be had at Burnsy's Run, so we decided to give it a shot, and well, yours surely struck out. Our fishing buddy did get a spotted bass and a striped bass, and we ended up doing a little Catch and Cook YouTube Shorts video. Very simple recipe, tastes really good too. Anyhow, it's Corm Engineer run, so you have to pay five bucks for a day use fee as well as the boat ramp, it's all included, or you can pay 20 bucks for some overnight camping, some really good campgrounds. Initially, you can pay online. So we got there about 6 a.m. in the morning and paid online through the website that they provided at the at the sign where you gave you information. And soon after that, we were able to do some fishing. You do have to have a Texoma license. In fact, we reached out to Texas Parks and Wildlife, and they clarified for us that bottom line, even though we have a Texas resident license and an Oklahoma non-resident license, you still need to have that Texoma license. Additionally, vice versa, our fishing buddy has an Oklahoma license resident and a Texas non-resident license, and he still needed it as well. So do get that Texoma license. It's only 12 bucks, good for the calendar year. So you have to just renew it come the new year. But bottom line, hey, nothing to worry about. Good good uh, opportunity to catch a fish or two there as well. We started out the morning hitting that burst Burns East run and hit the cove area and saw some some service activity. But we ended up making a run up to the dam face. So we definitely did a, a workout in. I'm not sure how far it was. I think maybe at least five miles or more. Uh, so we made it from Burns East Run's cove. Past the beach area, right up to the dam face, fished up and down there, and then went all the way back across and hit another cove just, um, oh, I think, further to the west of Burns East, but kind of kept running around that area and trying to see if we can get something, and, well, only got the two. I did see a number of the uh, charter boat fishermen as well as uh, other fishermen working that area in the deeper section, so it looked like they were deeper this time, so... We were hoping to have some shad with us, but unfortunately didn't catch any shad with the cast net. But if we did, I'm pretty sure we may have gotten a few dinks here and there, if not maybe a keeper or two. The slamming jig rig is what I was using as well as an umbrella rig and rattle traps and I struck out. Fishing buddy ended up using a rattle trap with a leading crappie jig and got one, I believe it was a striped bass on the rattle trap and then the spotted bass on a crappie jig that lead crappie jig in this case. So he, he rigged it up slab and jig rig style, but instead of using a slab, he put on a rattle trap. All right, so that was good to know to keep that in your back pocket. The other thing to keep in mind was, well, that spotted bass was 15 inches, but we learned that there's actually no size limit. And then we also found out a little bit more information about a spotted bass, because we weren't sure, largemouth versus spotted. Well, we found some good information on Texas Parks of Wildlife, having to deal with the eye and the mouth uh, almost like a small mouth or uh, instead of a large mouth, how the mouth goes before the eye versus large mouth goes after the eye. And it's the jaw piece right here. I mean, you can look it up on Texas Parks and Wildlife. But it was good to know that as well as some lines that are on the belly on a spotted bass as well as that spotted lateral line versus a large mouth bass. So good to know because guess what? There is no size limit for spotted bass on Texoma, as well as a l large number of Texas Parks and Wildlife uh, regulations, or at least locations in Texas. So, hey, good to know. And oh, by the way, that striped bass, I believe that one went about maybe 14 inches. That one hit the rattle trap. And, well, there's no size limit there for minimum size limit for Texoma. There is a size limit or the number that you can keep that are 20 inches or over. I think it was like two or something. But do check the regulations before you go. Uh, but that said, ended up having a really good catch cook. Uh, a very simple recipe. I'll post it here at the end or somewhere in this video. But till then, go check out our video. Burns Run East, Texoma. All right. All right, getting ready to go. We're just going to do a water entry launch. All right. 
Let's get the seat situated. Turn this this way. All right. Our fish buddy's launched. Your know, tree's gonna try this umbrella rig that I used. Decided to bring the bait caster too this time. Just cause, maybe we might get something bigger. So I wanted to take this baby out and see what happens. All right, let's see what happens. All right, we're just kind of working our way over to the main part of the lake, but we're gonna try to work this cove also. Thought I heard something jump to my right, so I'm gonna take a look at it here real quick. There's something hiding in here. Looks like we're getting some surface activity, so we're gonna try casting real quick and see if we can get one to hit. All right, nothing. Let's go and uh, start trolling again. Okay, we're kind of in the one of the points here. You can see the water's really up. We're kind of in some shallow water, about maybe a foot or two. Seeing some surface activity, I think it's some, them chasing some shad, but so far we haven't gotten a striper. But we'll keep at it. Okay, our fishing buddy caught something. Let's go check it out. It's been uh, seeing a lot of surface activity. It looks like mainly some small guys. But hopefully he's got something that, uh, well, let's just take a look at it. What is it? Striper? Striper? All right. Well, that's a nice one. What did he hit? The rattle trap? Yep. <laughs> okay, so it looks like first fish of the day is going to be a striper. And he went for a rattle trap. This is that chartreuse and silver with a little red on it. And bottom line, it's the only one that he has in his tackle box. So <laughs> it worked. We'll take it. Okay, we're going to head to the dam face and see what we can get. We've been trying different things in and out of the cove here. And only got that one striper on a rattle trap. So we see a lot of the party boats and uh, charters out here. So we know there's fish out here. It looks like they're in the deeper area now. We're just going to work our way along the dam face and play it by ear. There's a lot of wind and waves, so we got to be careful in our little kayaks, but we'll play it by ear. All right, you can see it's a pretty strong wind and got some nice sized waves here, so we're just going to play this by ear. Got a lot of folks out here fishing. Not really tell if they're catching anything though, but they're here. All right, about three quarters to the dam face, so we're almost there. Just got to watch these waves and play it by ear. We're almost at the dam face, but we saw an opening over here along the, the bank, and we're going to see if we can do some bottom bouncing with some tandem rigs and maybe get a fish or two to hit. Okay, we're pretty much at the dam face. I'm just kind of playing it by ear, trying to work this one bank, and then we'll head up to the rocky area along the dam face. So far, no hits, but hey, we're still optimistic. All right, we're here at the dam face. And so far, no strikes, but hey, we're playing it by ear. Got a good exercise in it, at least. That's one thing about kayak fishing is if you don't get anything, well, you're still getting a good exercise. Get a workout in, and hey, just got to be careful today. A lot of wind and waves, a lot of boats. Fishing buddy just got something. Let's go check it out. <clears throat> I think he got him on a rattle trap again. Yeah, I see some stuff hitting on top here. What did he hit on? Rattle trap? No? <laughs> on that minnow? Yeah. The clouser? No. Oh wow, the little jig. Alright. Oh, I think he's a keeper. Yeah. Yeah. When we're running low, we keep all kinds of stuff. I <laughs> know. As long as it's 14 inches. It's probably 14 inches. Actually, it's a spotted. See hybrid, the thing? Right? Not a hybrid. It's a it's a different kind of largemouth or bass. That's cool. Good job. All right, we're over here still at the dam face. Got that one spotted bass. And I got that striped bass earlier, and so far it's been a slow go. Our fisher buddy got that last one on a crappie jig, and yours truly has struck out so far. But we'll see how it goes. All right, well, it was a rough day. Did get a workout in. 
and luckily our fishing buddy was able to at least catch two. We got a little striped bass and a, a uh, spotted bass. All right, so we'll try to do a little catch thing, cook thing here and see what happens. Okay, so at the end of all this, what do I say? I wish we had Shad this round. Tried the cast net, didn't get any, so may just, well, bring some, some Shad ourselves, catch it over there at our local lake, freeze them, and make sure we got all the water out because you can transport as long as you get all the water out here in Texas. All right, next time, catch you all later, and good luck and good fishing.